Hi guys, welcome to my front tutorial. This is going to be step one. We have to build the foundation skills. You can't rush this step. Then teach the dog to come into the food and to push into position, demanding to get close. Coming into the food. It's going to train the dog to use the food as a tool for reward placement for the positions. Because food's not going to go to the dog, the dog's going to come to the food. We're also going to teach the dog to push into position. The first priority is always building comfort with being close to you. Some dogs, they have kind of a space bubble issue. They don't like being super close to you because it's a little bit intimidating or makes them nervous. There's a lot of reasons, but that's going to be the first priority. Once we got that, we're going to teach the dog to value being in position, almost like pushing to be in position. You'll see how we start to build that. Uh, this actually turns into using the leg movement to guide straightness because we're going to be teaching the dog shoulder to knee or shoulder to leg targeting. So here I'm setting up a chair, something comfortable. You want to spread your legs apart and feed the dog between your legs. If your dog is nervous about that, you don't have to feed them like really deep between your legs. Maybe just feed them between your knees and just get it closer and closer. If your dog is able to feed between the legs, you want to actually feed off your tummy there. It's very important the dog learns that you're not going to give the food to them. He has to come into um, between your legs and get the food off your tummy. The whole point of this is teaching the dog to be comfortable with being close. So here's a different angle and it's going to show you the progression that you want to take as your dog gets better and more comfortable. So you're going to start with your legs pretty wide apart so it's not too scary for the dog. And remember if it's scary you want to um, feed at your knees and just slowly bring it up when your legs are wide. Now as your dog gets better you want to make your legs closer and closer together. He already has contact with my leg with her body and you actually want to make it super skinny just like that so she actually has to force her way in. And this builds position and just the motivation goes up because the dog has to fight to get it. Okay, now it's ready for step two. We're going to build speed and motivation. This one we're just going to be focusing on speed into the position. You want your dog to speed into position and the position is going to be standing with the legs apart. And we're slowly going to bring the legs together, getting more and more narrow. This looks like the game before, which means that the dog's going to understand pretty much how the progression goes. We're not going to get the legs quite as narrow as we did before, but um, just enough for your dog to run through. This introduces a new way to reward and support good fronts. So later on in the training, when your dog gives you a really great front, you can feed in position, but always make sure to throw between your legs, um, especially if you're in a training. So here I go. Um, I tossed my cookie there, I called her to front, I even made my leg nice and wide for her so it's easy for her to run through. I don't have a lot of space here, but if you have more space, ideally you want your dog to run without pausing. And you can just um, do it as I'm doing and you just go back and forth like this. Step 3 is perch work. You could even say perch work is pivotal to building a good front. Bad pun. Um, I'm actually, I am not actually going to go over perch work a lot. There's a lot of great tutorials. Follow the ones that advise you to teach the dog to pull into the position, like come into the position instead of pushing the dog around the perch. Um, so we're going to be talking about finding the front using targets for the feet. I always advise to do this after you have a great and smooth transition with the perch work. Um, you want to use cookie tosses to play with angles and keep up the motivation. Use different front feet targets so the dog doesn't get superstitious and it makes it easier to fade the targets. So next up we're gonna shoot, show Piper and she's doing some nice um, transitions from heel into front. Right here I want you to notice I keep the cookie very close to me and that's what step one was all about was teaching her how to come into the cookie there. Now in this one, I don't feed her a cookie in position because she is pretty good at finding the position. Um, I just keep it nice and fast paced and motivating. Depending on your dog's level, you don't really have to wait for them to be super perfect. I wait here a little bit too long than I wish that I did. Um, so I just like kind of go over it, like whatever, who cares don't dwell too much on perfection at this stage. Your dog is pretty new to it. They'll figure it out. So um, here's Piper's, the different 
moment. She actually was at this point without Paul Target. I had to show she could do a Paul Target. And she loves this game. Oh, I went underneath the guinea pig cage. She hated when it did that. <laughs> I didn't cut it off because I wanted to show you this last one. It was a nice angle. It looked really pretty. And she actually fixed herself. Like, she came closer. Okay. This is step four. We're actually going to be building the front, so that's exciting. We're going to be talking about standing and feeding close and using the foundation to build precision. So standing and feeding close. We're going to go back to feeding between the legs, but slowly start to stand up by sitting on books, um, getting on higher chairs or stools, things like that. We'll start to introduce the criteria of shoulders to knees or legs. Before, this was sort of coincidental. If the dog was touching you, it was because your legs were so close together. But now we're going to be talking about making it so that it's important for the dog to be able to do that. You want to overtrain closeness, especially with nervous space bubble dogs. But I think with almost every dog, there's a few dogs that you don't have to. Most of the time, the closeness is going to be the first thing that disappears when you increase criteria. You want to use the foundation to build precision. We're going to actually be talking about using slight leg bends to encourage good position, throwing food between the legs for higher value reward delivery. So uh, this is all exciting stuff. I have a cool, I have a bunch of cool videos after this little section here. So let's get to it. In this part of the video, I'm sitting on a chair and it has cushions on it. That's one of the options you can do. So Piper, right now, she has to be silly because she's a silly bean. She wants to see if that works. It doesn't work. I tell her she's a good girl because she's um, being creative. But I help her with a hand target. You can do that with your dogs. But you can see this criteria of being um, touching my legs is important here. Um, this one, I'm just squatting in the air. I know not everyone can do that, but that's another option. Um, and I'm feeding her cookies there. And here's the last option. I'm sitting just like on my bed or something. Just find tire things to sit on. Now it's okay if she jumps up. I don't really care because she's happy. And you can see I get like kind of higher up on the bed. So that's another option. I tell her she's a good bean. Right, where's my microphone? Okay, so this is my dog Piper. From this angle, she doesn't come in very straight, but I used my slight knee bend. You saw it right there. Um, I also repositioned so I get her really, really straight. But you don't always want to use the lure to get your dog straight, or they'll start to rely on it a lot. You want to start to test them. Um, after she does that and she corrects herself, I usually test her the same angle again and she usually uh, fixes herself. If your dog can't do that, then there's something missing. They need more training, need to understand a bit better. So basically, if your dog can't self-correct, that means you need to go back to the foundation skills, um, especially work back to the pivot or the pivots on the purchase and finding front on the target. But you might have to go back to step one. This is one of my students from when I worked at Petco. His name is Shadow. He graduated to um, having his owner stand mostly straight. They're keeping the treats very close and high in the front to support the good front there. They also have been working on heel. <laughs> He's such a pretty good dog. Very intense dog. I loved working with him. Oh, look at that. He's swinging his butt. 
Snow is 